So we're going to be proving um, parallel lines by using the converse of our uh, parallel line theorems. Okay, so in each of these cases you're given some information and you're asked to prove that a couple of lines are parallel. Okay, so you'll notice some of these are already filled in for us. That's just so that it can guide our proof so that you're better at it later. Okay, so step number one, A is parallel to B. That reason is because it is given. given. Always the reason for step number one is given. Okay, sometimes you can write all of the givens on the same line. Other times it might be beneficial to save it and use it later throughout your proof. But it doesn't matter really which way you do it. Depends on the preference of your teacher at the time. Personally, I don't mind whichever way you do it. Okay, so we know that line A is parallel to line B. So this line and this line are parallel. So what set of corresponding angles are congruent from this picture? Angle 1 and angle 3 are a set of corresponding angles. And according to the corresponding angle postulate, if parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Okay, these are some congruent angles because the lines are parallel. Okay, and our next step says angle one is congruent to angle two. And why are we able to write that? Because it's also part of your given. So we're going to write it down here so that we can use it now. So looking at our proof here, we have angle one is congruent to angle three. We also have angle one is congruent to angle two. So that means that angle two must therefore be congruent to angle three. Okay, because one and two are congruent. So one is congruent to three, one is also congruent to two, which means three must be therefore congruent to two. This is using what property? The transitive property. The transitive property. So remember what the transitive looks like. It looks like we have angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. That's the first step. We also have angle 1 being congruent oh my goodness to angle 2. That is the worst looking congruent symbol I have ever made. Okay, one is the same as three, one is also the same as two, therefore two must be the same as three. Okay, that is the transitive property. So why is now line CD parallel to line, sorry, line C parallel to line D? What kind of angles are two and three? These are corresponding angles to lines C and D. Therefore, these are parallel because of the corresponding angle postulates converse, which says if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So when you're trying to prove that lines are parallel, you have to find angles that are congruent. In this case, we have two sets of corresponding angles. If corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Okay, that's the converse of the corresponding angle postulate. Okay? And that's how you prove lines are parallel. You identify a pair that are congruent, and then you use that specific angle's theorem and or postulate. It's converse. Okay, so why don't you try Number two here. Okay, that should be angle three right there. The same as your give nope, it's single. It's angle two. Okay, so this time if you want, you're gonna write all of the givens on one line. Okay, write all of the givens on one line. Okay, so in this one we're going to write down both of our givens on the first line. 
A is parallel to B, and we are given that angle 1 is congruence to angle 3. Okay, it is in fact given. Okay, so let's mark that on here. We have that line A is parallel to line B, and angle 1 is congruence to angle 3. Okay, that information is given. So if you're not actually given some givens, you can look at your picture and find the markings. So we're marked as being parallel. We are marked as having some congruent angles. So if you're never not given a given, you can look at the picture. So the next step, what kind of angles are 1 and 2? These are alternate interior angles. They are between your parallel lines and on the opposite sides of the transversal. So these are congruent by the alternate interior angle theorem. Okay, which says if parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so we have parallel lines, so these are alternate interior angles. <clears throat> now our next step, because 1 is the same as 3, so angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Angle 1 is also congruent to angle 2. Therefore, what can we say? Angle 2 must also be congruent to angle 3. And this is by the transitive property again. Okay, you should be getting coming very familiar with how the transitive property looks within a proof. 1 is the same as 3. 1 is also the same as 2, therefore 2 is the same as 3. Okay, it's this setup right there. <clears throat> so, what kind of angles are angles 2 and 3 here? These are alternate exterior angles. So why, therefore, is C parallel to D? Because of the alternate exterior. exterior angle theorems converse. converse. Very good. Okay. The reason for the last step is what kind of angles these are. So depending on what kind of congruent angles you have, that's going to dictate the reason why your lines are parallel. Okay, before, those were corresponding angles, so the reason was the corresponding angle postulate converse. These are alternate exterior angles, <clears throat> so we use the alternate exterior angle theorems converse, which says if the alternate exterior angles are congruent, the lines have to be parallel. <clears throat> okay, that's the converse of the alternate exterior angle theorem. Okay, so really quickly, let's do this last one here together. The, um, it looks like in the reasons you write down two givens, so we're going to, in this case, separate our givens into two lines. The first one is that A is parallel to B. <clears throat> okay, let's mark. Here we have angle line A, sorry, line A. Here we have line B, so these are parallel. <clears throat> And we're also given that angle 3 is congruent to angle 5. <coughs> now, because A is parallel to B, what are a set of corresponding interior angles? <coughs> oh, yes, indeed. Consecutive interiors. Lo siento mucho. Consecutive interior. 2 and 5. So we can do this one of two ways. We can write that they're supplementary, or let's just write that they add up to 180. Measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180. Okay. I believe the uh, theorem actually says that they're supplementary, so there should be a secondary line in here probably that changes from supplementary to adding to 180. Um, so in case you see that somewhere else, just know that that uses the definition of supplementary. Okay, so what else are we given? 
that angle 3 is congruent to angle 5. Okay, that's also part of your given statement. <coughs> now, if you'll notice, step number 4 changes the congruence symbol of step number 3 into an equal symbol. What is the reason we can change from congruence to equals? Using the definition of congruence. Okay, because angles are congruent, their measures must be equal. Okay, so once again, that is how you change from congruence to equality within a proof. You use the definition of congruence. So let's see, we know that three is the same as five and two plus three adds up, sorry, 2 plus 5 adds up to 180. And we know that these two are equal, so what would be the next logical step in our proof? Where else do we see something with the measure of angle 5 in our proof? Right here, right? We see measure of angle 5 right there. So instead of measure of angle 5, what can I write? Measure of angle 3. Okay, that's very advantageous, isn't it? Because if angle 2 plus angle 3 adds up to 180, that means these lines can be parallel. Okay, and that's exactly what we want. We want a relationship between these two in this case so that we have parallel lines. Now what property did we, did we use that allowed us to replace, bless you, we used substitution. So whenever we are replacing with the equal, so here we have them being equal and here we have them replacing, you are using substitution. Okay, replacing with an equal is substitution. Different than transitive, okay, using equal. So then why is line C parallel to line D? Because of the CIA theorem's converse, which says if consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So we have proven in step number five that we have some supplementary consecutive interior angles, therefore those lines must be parallel. Okay, so whenever you're trying to prove that lines are parallel, you need to de develop a relationship between the angles. Okay, either corresponding angles or alternate interior angles or alternate exterior angles or consecutive interior or exteriors so that the lines will become parallel because of the converse of those theorems. Okay? Fantastic.